This is a video I've wanted to do for a long time, comparing the best photography apps side by side, which ones have the best editing tools, filters, and are just great to use. I asked you guys on Twitter, which apps do you use? And this is how I came down to the short list that I'll be comparing. And this video is brought to you by NordVPN, more about them later. Now let's start with the essential photography adjustments like exposure and white balance. Those really matter a lot. And if an app doesn't get it right, I'm not gonna use it. We'll take a look at VSCO or Visco first, since that's what I use. And it's kind of an example of what I think is a good exposure adjustment. Now, what we're looking for here is that there's like evenness across the whole image. So you can see as I go up and down, the saturation kind of makes sense. It appropriately goes up and down. Everything feels right. Like the bright image looks good. So does the dark image. And now let's contrast that with what I think is a poor example, Apple's photo app. Now if we go in and edit the same image, use their exposure slider, it does some really weird things. Take a look at those highlights. They're completely clipped. They just go to pure white. There's none of that soft roll off at the top of the highlights. As we go down into the darker exposure, there's some really weird stuff happening with the saturation. It's just not doing what a camera would naturally do if you raised or lowered the exposure. And that's what I'm looking for. Photos app also has a brightness slider. So let's try that. If I raise the exposure, it gets really desaturated. And if I lower it, the brightness all the way, it's like, super saturated. I don't know. It just, it seems to not know what a good image looks like. Next, let's see how Darkroom does. This was one that a lot of people mentioned that they use. And I'll let you know why I don't use it once we get to the filters section. But if I grab their brightness, that is their exposure slider, it does the right thing. The saturation is managed correctly as I move up and down. And like I said, it feels like an exposure adjustment like a camera would do. Next is Pixelmator Pro. Now, this isn't one that I use that often, but I do really like their approach to photography. They clearly understand it. They have great apps on the Mac and looking at their exposure slider, it works correctly. It looks the way that it should. Taking a look at Lightroom, I feel like they're kind of the gold standard when it comes to basic adjustments because they're using the same engine that Adobe uses on the desktop and it's super powerful. Like one thing I appreciate is that I can move the exposure all the way up and down much more than any of the other apps because Sometimes you need to like overexpose an image three stops and it just makes sense and everything looks right. They are doing it correctly. I love this about Lightroom. Looking at Snapseed, this is actually like an old school app. I was using this before it was acquired by Google. Obviously it's still going strong. A lot of you out there use it. And I think part of the reason is that it's free and has a lot of powerful tools in it. If we adjust the brightness, but this looks good. These brightness controls. Yeah, this is like an appropriate exposure adjustment. Good job, Snapseed. Now, finally, Teza. So this is the one that my wife Anya uses for a lot of things. So I had to include it. I know a lot of fashion bloggers use it. It's pretty great, actually, at just really quick and easy looks. Now, the brightness, as I go brighter, it, it feels pretty good. But on the darker end, it does this weird oversaturation thing. You can see every single app is doing their exposure completely differently. Exposure is so important. Let's take a look at one more photo to compare them all side by side. Most of them do the right thing balancing the brightness and the saturation as you raise the exposure without clipping the highlights to pure white. Interesting, the Lightroom shifted the oranges of the dress. The two that utterly fail the tests are Apple Photos and Teza. They throw away the highlight detail. The saturation is out of control. Lowering the exposure, the same apps are passing the test, giving a more or less natural feel. Again, Apple and Teza fall down, especially the way that the highlights become a hazy gray an obvious digital artifact. Now, I won't have time to go through every tool, but another one I'd recommend you check out and try yourself is the temperature slider. Move it around and see if it feels right. What you're looking for is that it's kind of affecting the mid-tones first, and it's not just turning your highlights blue or yellow. For example, most of Tezza's basic sliders actually aren't great, so if I warm it up, it's like not doing enough. It seems like it almost doesn't do anything, and then I cool it down, and it looks like there's a blue gel over top of it. It doesn't look like a cooler version of the image. It looks like I spilled blue paint on it. Along with all these great photo editing apps, there is one more that you should have on your phone and your computer, and that's the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. Now, at this point, you've all heard about VPNs. You know how they keep your data safe, especially if you're traveling and you're connecting to hotel Wi-Fi. You don't necessarily know how secure that is. So by routing all your internet traffic through a VPN, you can guarantee security. And you can also use a VPN to access content from a country that you're not in. So for example, my wife uses it to watch Polish Netflix. Or if you're traveling, you can see stuff as if you're at home. Wherever you are, your computer can be somewhere else in the world. And NordVPN is really easy to use. You can connect with just one click, or I've got it set up to connect with zero clicks. And they've got a new feature called threat protection. 
And this is great because you don't even actually have to be on the VPN and it will be protecting you from malware. It has a built-in ad blocker and tracker blocker. So all the time you can always be protected whenever you're on the internet. And with Nordlinks, you can be sure that you've got full speed internet. There's no bandwidth throttling. It's gonna be running as fast as it possibly can. So head to nordvpn.com slash Stallman. The link is in the description. You can get a big discount as well as a 30 day money back guarantee. Thanks again to NordVPN for supporting the channel. Here's the thing about filters on my phone. The whole reason I do iPhone photography is so that it's quicker and I post more often. So a lot of this ends up in my Instagram stories, which you should be following me over on Instagram if you're not already. My priority isn't having a lot of filters, it's just having good ones, just like it was in the film days. You'd choose your film stock and that's what you would shoot with. So I'm gonna start with VSCO again and I can't go through and actually talk about every single filter because there's a million of them. So instead, I'm just gonna flip through what there is and explain what I'm looking for in a filter, but this will give you a sense of what's out there. So one thing I don't like is this kind of filter, which is giving a color cast to either the highlights or the shadows. To me, that's a white balance adjustment. I don't need a filter to be doing that. I'm looking for color neutral ones. So actually I'll jump into my favorites list to show you a few that I like and use all the time. And you can see that they are sort of neutral, like they're just providing a enhanced version of what the image initially look like, but often I'm just going to this short list and using something from it. I'm not going through the long list of every single filter when I try to choose a new one. But yes, what I like about VSCO is that for the most part, they are not editing the highlights and shadows in that deteriorating way that makes it look bad. Now, launching Darkroom, this is actually why I don't use it. It's a good example. We use that same image and start going through. And there are some that I like. I definitely, don't get me wrong, I could live with Darkroom, it's fine. But what I see a lot of them doing is basically only editing using curves adjustments. So here's an example. This is sort of like this faded tone where as I go through it, the, I can actually see the adjustments, which is a little bit hidden from you in VSCO. You can't see what they're doing, but this is just moving the sliders around and the results just look sort of basic. Now I've done in-depth videos about color grading, which is what it would take to really explain what's going on here, what I find to be the differences between a good and a not so good filter. Obviously darkroom is passable. There's photographers I respect and are doing great work that are using it all the time and I don't even notice. It just doesn't really click with the way that I use them. Now darkroom is not the worst we can do. Let's look at the photos app. I just, I don't understand why Apple hasn't done better with this because they understand photography. Like they know what's good. They designed my favorite camera here. <laughs> but like, as I go through them again, it's like, these are just so 1999. Like these do not look like contemporary filmic looks that I'd be into. They're fine kind of, but like I say, it just looks like a few basic sliders like increasing contrast or moving the white balance. I would just never use the photos filters. Now, Pixelmator, I told you, I love that it's adjustment settings. I don't love its presets quite as much. They do the same thing of adjusting the existing sliders, same as Lightroom does. A lot of them do this, which isn't my preferred method. I would always rather have two steps of do my neutral adjustments on their own and then add the preset as its own adjustment layer that I can dial in to more or less. But as I go through these, I mean, I prefer these to Darkroom. I think Pixelmator is doing a better job. Would they be my first choice? No, I still prefer VSCO, but there's some usable stuff in here. But again, here's an example of what I don't like, those highlights that are just completely tinted and awful. Also, a vignette shouldn't be part of a filter. That should be a separate setting. Now with Lightroom, I kind of have to look at it differently because it's got these built-in profiles here, but that's not really the measure you should take it by because these are, you know, kind of mediocre. The nice thing is you can use any Lightroom preset that you download for the regular desktop app can work inside of Lightroom Mobile. So although the ones built in are okay, like there's some there's some decent ones in here, you can also get very nice looking ones like the ones that I sell. There's a link in the description below, but you know, lots of other YouTubers and photographers you follow have probably made Lightroom presets and they all work in Lightroom Mobile. So that's the huge advantage, but it does mean you have to go find them somewhere else and install them. And you can actually see, I haven't even bothered to do that. I don't use Lightroom Mobile that often. I use Lightroom on the desktop because for me, the phone is about being quick and agile and the desktop, that's when I'm doing precision work. So Tezza, well, I'm just gonna show you the free filters because my wife pays for an account and I don't wanna pay twice. But I think this is what their strong suit is, is that really like quickly get a nice look. 
Some of them are maybe a little heavy handed, but you can just dial them back a bit. Um, it, what I like about it though, is that they just have, they have good taste in terms of what the colors are, which is the most important thing to me. It's not that it's doing something strong to the image. It's that they have an opinion about what it should look like that meshes well with my taste. Snapseed, I have not used in years. I don't even know what their filters look like anymore. They used to look terrible. Oh, okay, so that's interesting. It actually shows you all of the different adjustments that it's doing to it. Yeah, no, as I'm flipping through these, like I wouldn't really use these. These still look like digital photos to me that have just kind of been enhanced. <laughs> Let's look at some power user tools for a second here. I won't spend that long on it. Basically in VSEO, there isn't a lot. So that's something that I'm missing. All I can really do is they've recently added a dodge and burn tool, which, you know, it works well enough, but it's, it's not the most important to me anyway. Glad it's there. If you haven't seen what Lightroom is doing lately, their automatic tools are amazing right now. It can detect the sky or your subject and does a really accurate job of cutting them out and applying adjustments just to your subject or background or whatever it is you need. There's also gradient layers and radial adjustment layers, like all this stuff that is actually really simple to use and very commonly used and lets you adjust exposure, white balance, like these basic tools that they're not advanced on the computer, but on a phone, they become very powerful and Lightroom kills it for that stuff. In Pixelmator, I've got a good example from like one hour ago of what their healing brush can do. But I can basically just draw over people and they instantly disappear. For an even more powerful version of this, there's an app called Retouch that I use just for this cloning and healing and all that stuff. This is actually another strong point for Snapseed. It has a ton of stuff built into here. One that I've always used and love is the selective adjustment tool. So if you just add a point, let's say I put it on this green, I can like expand the area that it's affecting and I can change the brightness or darkness of anything that is automatically being masked by that color selection. I could also, you know, add another one on the purple over here and then I could just change the brightness or saturation of just that one selection. In the digital age, we also add all sorts of special effects to our image. A lot of us do anyway. The classic example of this is lens distortions. I realize that lens distortions has all the other tools that everyone else does, but I still kind of think of them as being the way to, you know, add snow to your image, which is not believable here. <laughs> but if you ever need to do it, lens distortions is the go-to. In VSCO, they've added a ton of these like different distressed frames. So it can look like film or film burns, all this stuff. The ones that I use the most often are if you go to essential, there's grain one and grain two. That's it. I had those a lot. They just kind of give a little more texture and often grain can just add perceived sharpness, even if the image is a little soft, the grain makes it feel sharper or just more like tangible and physical. Teza also has grain, but the way that Anya described it is that it doesn't look good until you apply it and save the final image. So it works, nothing special. As far as I'm aware, Darkroom doesn't have much of this. Maybe I'm just not discovering it fast enough. I mean, you guys use Darkroom, so if I'm missing it, you'll let me know. But um, all I'm aware of is that you can add mats, which that's a good feature, but it, it's not a lot. Snapseed has tons of this stuff, but I think a lot of it looks pretty bad. Like if you look at the grunge, this is this is like 2005 early Instagram. Don't don't use this. It's terrible. <laughs> so what have I learned testing all these apps? Well, first of all, there's no one that is clearly better than the others. They all do things differently, have different approaches, and maybe one of those will fit how you do things. But what I would be looking for if you're not sure what the right app is for you is something that every time you open it, you can quickly get to the final image without too much effort. To me, the phone is about being the modern point and shoot and being able to be quick and spontaneous and just post things as you go, but still give them a bit of a polished look. So how does this change things for me? Probably not a lot. I'll continue to use VSCO as my main editing app and then Lightroom for the power tools and photos only for organizing. I really wish Apple would get things together because why can't it just be a built-in app that does the best job of presets? I mean, they can do the same filters everyone else can. Anyway, we'll see if they do someday, but until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.